Welcome to the Smack Happy Design Video Cast, where we explore all things web and marketing. With your hosts, Nicole and Danielle. Hello, welcome to episode number 17. I'm Nicole. And I'm Danielle. And I just want to remind our audience that we'll be taking some notes for you. So if you just want to sit back, relax, and listen, you can download the notes at smackhappy.com videos. Just search for episode number 17. Today, our guest is Shrai Chen, the founder and chief puzzler of Greater Good Games, a company that focuses on scavenger hunts and games for groups. Welcome, Shrai. Tell us a little more about yourself. Sure. Uh, so I have about seven years of experience in the corporate team building world, and I've worked with lots of different companies, large and small. And right now, uh, Greater Good Games hosts corporate team building events such as scavenger hunts, races, and escape rooms. And we just launched our distributed uh, team building game. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. All right. So... What exactly is team building and why would someone want to invest in doing it? Yeah, so basically team building is an activity that you do outside of the workplace usually and it's a half day to a full day event that you basically give your team members a challenge or something that's a concrete thing that they can accomplish. So the goal is to bond together to build that rapport, trust, and safety, um, and to create group norms that are better than the ones that you would create in the work environment. Um, and you wanna invest time because team building both um, increases your company income and it decreases your costs. So it increases income because it gets your team to be more effective and more efficient and to work better together. Um, and it decreases costs because team building has been shown to decrease um, company churn, so less people um, quit. And it also actually decreases sick and, um, sick and PTO time because people, when they're happier at work, they tend to call in sick less. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you how many days I took when I worked in the corporate world. <laughs> oh, I've got a little sniffle. I'm just going to stay home today. <laughs> exactly. But if you know that your friends are there waiting on you and counting on you for that report or whatever, then you feel accountable to them and you actually go into work when you're not feeling well, which uh, may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> True, because you don't want to get your coworkers sick. Yeah. <laughs> If you're actually sick. Um, yeah, yeah, building accountability. Uh, I feel like that's just huge all around. Um, so I guess that, that sort of leads into the next question um, with like, how do you build rapport and trust and safety in the workplace? Yeah, I mean, it's all about kind of seeing someone as they are, like outside of the workplace and outside of that transactional, I need you to get that report done to me tomorrow or whatever. It's like, if you, if you see Bob seeing a great Whitney Houston, then you're never going to just be like stomping all over Bob, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> it's like creating these um, opportunities for shared enjoyment and happiness and joy and kind of um, creating that kind of safe environment where you don't feel like someone's going to keep on stomping on you all the time. Mm -hmm. That's a great feeling to have, especially if you're on the receiving end of it, too. Exactly. Yeah, and that was a really cool example, too. So Bob singing Whitney Houston, that could be part of the games that you put together. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. That's cool. Um, my scavenger hunts always try to stretch people further than they would be willing to do in the workplace, mm -hmm. um, but not far enough that it's, like, scary or anything. Yeah. I bet you after that, Bob's favorite movie is going to be the new Whitney documentary that sits out right now. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So tell us about some of the team building tactics you use and, and why they work so well. Yeah, so I like hosting scavenger hunts, which um, get people 
people to get outside of the work environment and kind of explore the San Francisco Bay Area and basically to um, play around. The tactics that I really love using are inner team dynamics where you have to like find another team and create a super team to do a challenge or you might have to like work together, work against another team kind of combating them for a specific challenge. Um, so that gets you involved with a lot of different people. There's also challenges where you have to like um, be a super spy and find a certain someone uh, on the on another team and slip a piece of paper inside their bag or um, or take something from them. So you like um, you add in super spy dynamics and it's super fun. Mm -hmm. So I think the cool thing is you mentioned doing this here in the Bay Area. Um, but I just want to mention really quick that um, Shrai created a, a game for my remote team as well, which we did for our holiday party. And I think we all had a lot of fun doing it. And, you know, being remote, it's hard to do team building activities. So I think it was really neat. And I don't know, everybody had a lot of fun things to say about it afterwards. Thank you. Yeah, I'm actually going backwards and doing all the info interviews and trying to um, make this remote team building thing a business. Um, so I'm hopefully going to be launching soon. Oh, cool. Very cool. So why are puzzles and games good for team building? Well, the thing about puzzles is that specifically the ones that um, team building events usually use are ones that you don't, you can't really compete complete it by yourself. You need a large variety of skill sets and um, and you one person might be great at a word search while another person is great at, um, at putting together a jigsaw puzzle while someone else is better at finding two differences between two things. So you really get to showcase your rare random talents outside of the workplace and you learn to rely on your teammates for some, for, um, to help you. Uh, and games are always great for team building because they get you out of your comfort zone and they stretch you a little bit and you get to like play and have fun and you share a bunch of laughs, which always increases your oxytocin levels in your brain, which are happy neurotransmitters. And then um, you learn to bond with people better. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. <laughs> Um, Have you ever had anybody that um, uh, that was sort of like super reluctant to like participate in any of the games and then like how did you pull them out of it if you could? I just I just I'm curious because I know that like every once in a while, you know, you get somebody who's like, e, I don't like this stuff and they just <laughs> stay in that little realm of like whatever. But who doesn't want to be happy and laugh and, you know, get those those things going with your, your coworkers, but. Totally. Um, you basically just like acknowledge that they're not feeling so into it and kind of lean in and kind of make fun of that or like, um, or, or basically riff off of it. I hire a lot of like improv actors and immersive actors. So they are very good at drawing people out of their shells, even when they're not so into it. That's good. So it's like the, the really uptight guy in the front row of the comedy club <laughs> that you riff off of, maybe. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so what are some of the things a new business can do so that their company culture and like interpersonal relationships start off in a healthy way? Yeah, so I think the most important thing about building your team at the very beginning is hiring the right people. Um, not only do you want to hire the superstars who are great at things, um, you have to hire people with high emotional intelligence. People who recognize that other people are human beings and that are like, um, and try to support each other and create, foster a great environment. Because um, if you're first and second hires aren't that good they'll create more of a competitive environment and then um, it's really hard to transition that kind of culture yeah that's a really good point um, 
if I can brag for just a second, I'm really proud of the team that we have because yeah. everybody is like very helpful with each other. And it's really awesome to see that like if someone's struggling, you know, other team mem members will like jump in to help them out. And it's, it's so true. Um, you really do have to kind of try to set that culture in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So totally. And I could even see that from the couple hours that we played the game, that every team member is super supportive of each other. Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm glad that you were able to see that. <laughs> nice. So what about an established, not so great culture? Like, how does someone change that from within, if possible? Mm -hmm. um, so that's a very huge challenge. I think the first thing that needs to be changed is um, processes, which is always hard to get changed, but um, the process of hiring, the process of onboarding staff members, of how you treat um, the f a staff member the first day they show up. I've been in work situations where no one even knew that a new staff member show is showing up that day and they're like, hi, I'm here to work. And then everyone's like, oh, what? <laughs> um, and that's just not how you do it. Um, if you want to create a healthy work environment, um, you always want to have a buddy system. You want to basically have their um, everyday first couple of days scripted out. Um, and to basically to change the culture, you have to really have a come to Jesus moment with all your staff members, um, especially the ones that you've identified as um, leaders in this like bad apple kind of environment. Um, it has you have to basically put your foot down and say, we're going to change. This is not a great way for us to work and we're going to change and you can be with us or you hear some severance or something. Um, and that's basically if people aren't, if everyone isn't bought into changing a culture, it's really hard to change it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's still like super, I mean, and this is maybe just my experience, but there's still so many places that are like that, that just haven't quite got that culture part down yet or they try to be so one way in a culture that doesn't accommodate everybody, like everyone. It just accommodates a group of people. So I've worked um, in like different situations where there's no regard for any of it. And then there's like an extreme regard, like, um, you know, I saw in an agency that I worked at before, it was very focused on young people and millennials and things like that where that's great but it also left out a lot of the people that didn't quite fit into that category and mm -hmm. they were always feeling like "Ooh, why is this person starting work and you know so that that whole thing that you explained about the bad apple environment um so that's probably something that i think if everyone just thought about that a little bit longer it could really make a difference in the workplace for sure completely Mm -hmm. But also, like, if someone is, you know, being negative or starting to go down that path, you also have to catch it as early as you can because it can kind of spread and, like, other people start to be grumpy or whatever. And Right. And that's why team building activities aren't so great when, once you go down a super bad path like that. But if you do it um, recurringly, regularly, um, then it shouldn't even have happened because you've really built that bond with your teammates. Mm -hmm. So if we can go back to the remote teams for a second, um, are the tactics that you use for the remote stuff different when the people are like geographically distributed? Yeah, I mean, geographically distributed teams are a kind of a different Thing than a scavenger hunt where you can gather everyone together. There is really nothing that replaces face-to-face -face contact. Video conference is okay, but you don't actually get to see everything. You don't actually get to feel the person's vibes and stuff. Um, but um, the way that I do remote team building is I create games that are very um, 
interconnected. So everyone has to work together. They have to communicate and collaborate and trust each other. And when I work with a remote team, I like to assess what they currently do and what I give them hints and tips on how to um, work better as a team. I've talked with maybe 50 remote teams already, and it really shows when some, a company cares about culture and team building, even as a remote team. Um, for example, um, some companies have used, there's a lot of Slack integrations that are pretty useful for remote team building, like uh, Donut pairs you up with a random person for like a short 20 to 30 minute coffee where you chat about anything. And you basically sit in front of a video conference if you're not in the same location and you kind of chat with them um, and learn from them and kind of get to know them um, to basically replace that like water cooler moment that you don't actually get with a remote team. Um, there's also Slack integrations that, um, that let you give karma points or like kudos. Um, and those are basically, they help you um, publicly recognize someone for do going above and beyond something. And it could be as simple as giving, giving someone a taco and it's <laughs> silly and cute, but it's still like everyone sees that you gave someone a taco for finishing that report early or whatever. And that makes everyone happy and smile. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then also having regular team, regular um, meetings, video conference meetings with, um, icebreakers and having some kind of overlap in um, in time really helps with remote teams. I don't know, what do you guys do at Smack Happy? Yeah, I've actually got something great for you to add to your list. Okay. We started doing this MVP thing. Uh -huh. So every other week, um, someone will get a box that has the MVP trophy and um, like we've got a silly little medal and there was a crown. I don't know if the crown's still making its rounds in there too, but, um, I think someone kept it, but that's okay. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So, um, uh, we have our team meeting every Monday at 10. So during the team meeting, you open the box and whoever sent it to you has to say like why they chose you as the MVP. And, um, you also send like a couple of local things. Like if, you have a chocolate place nearby or something or, or something funny, like a little joke. Um, and then you have a week to keep your, 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 um, I was going to say crown, but the crown's not going anymore. <laughs> you have a week to keep your medal and the trophy and you can like show them off all week. And then you have to choose the next person. So you, then you mail it to the next MVP. That's great. That's a little bit of public recognition and a little bit of celebration. Um, that's a great way to do it. And then they can kind of talk about it with everyone um, and kind of you, you really get to understand why people recognize you. That's, mm -hmm. that's a great way to do it. Yeah. Nice. And then um, we're keeping track of all the MVPs. So at the end of the year, I think whoever has the most, um, we're going to celebrate that person in some way. I'll have to figure out what that's going to be, but. Nice. Be fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, another thing we want to do but haven't figured out how to do yet is try to watch a movie together. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've watched movies on Google Hangouts. Um, yeah, it is it is a little more difficult, but um, you can either stream it all together on Netflix and then kind of chat about it on like a Slack or, or whatever chat channel, or mm -hmm. one person plays the movie and everyone else watches it on the on the hangouts on the screen share or something. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we have not quite gotten it to work yet because there's always a connection issue too with the streaming. So it's like not everyone sees something at the same time. And um, we found services where you can get together in the same sort of chat room, but it has to be a public like YouTube video and not um, like something that you would buy on YouTube or, uh, you know, a movie you just have like laying around at home or something on Netflix or whatever. 
Mm -hmm. Kind of a challenge. So if there's anyone out there listening that has a solution, <laughs> let us know because that would like make my day. <laughs> we got so mad. I got so mad trying like six different things that didn't work out. I was like, oh, oh. I wish I just knew how to make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One day we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I think uh, a good thing about Smack Happy is you guys do kind of overlap part of your work days, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, everyone's, um, we go from, from East Coast to West Coast time, so there's like, you know, just the three hour difference, but it's not too bad because we do have like the big overlap in between. So yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found that if you have some overlap and then some time to work by yourself without interruptions, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Agreed. <laughs> All right, so time for the fun question. What inspires you most? What inspires me the most? I think the thing that inspires me the most are entrepreneurs who are doing well and going places like you with Smack Happy. And um, I've, I just have a lot of friends who recently started businesses. So um, it's great to see everyone struggling, but it really inspires me when I see someone doing really well. Mm -hmm. That is true. Mm -hmm. Makes me want to do better too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I want to insert a quote here, but can't quite figure out what the quote is, but it reminds me of just like, you know, you have to struggle a little bit before you find the success and, um, you know, seeing how other people do it, like learning by example, that sort of thing. Um, I can definitely relate to that inspiration as well. Okay. Uh, it's also kind of why we started making this video cast, right? We want to help and inspire other, you know, entrepreneurs who are, trying to figure it all out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're still trying to figure it out, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, you're, it's, it's a constant growth. <laughs> yeah, I feel like the journey is kind of like you go up, 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 and then down, and then up, and then down. It's, it's a very big roller coaster. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> all right, so how can our audience find you if they want to work with you? Yeah, so I can be found at hello at greatergoodgames.com. Uh, the greater has an eight in it, so it's kind of a puzzle. So it's hello at gr, the number eight, er, goodgames.com. Okay, great. We will share all that info in our notes. And I just want to thank the audience. I want to thank you, Shrai, for joining us on the thank video. You. We aim to help elevate your business through real life experiences and advice. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Smack Happy Design video cast. For more information and downloads, visit smackhappy.com forward slash video cast, where you'll find more episodes and the opportunity to subscribe on YouTube or iTunes. You can also sign up for our newsletter delivered to your inbox monthly. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and colleagues. Again, that's smackhappy.com forward slash videocast. See you next time.